Hello, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, on a day like this, I think we're pretty good. What a, what a great day to have right now. Great day to go out and grill. I'm excited about making dinner tonight. Sit down on the deck, enjoy the day. I've just been <clears throat> putting up the, um, just in time, you know, I've been putting up all the uh, pageant costumes that people bring, been bringing back. You know, I, I figure I have until Easter to put the pageant costumes back up. <laughs> but it was a beautiful day to be walking back and forth between buildings, taking costumes back. Hi, Vicky. And it's just a great day because the Arkansas Razorbacks are number three seed in the men's tournament and number four seed in the women's. Not that that really makes me happy. Woo pig. <laughs> Not to say all the other teams aren't great too. I'm just really happy for my team. Hey, Frida. <laughs> Give everybody a couple more minutes. Hello, Patricia. Hi, Henry. Thank you. Deuces, Miss Amanda. How you doing? Almost time. Hey, Frida, thank you for being here. And thank you for all the help you give us in the office. It really means a lot. Thank you. Wow, yeah, it's a big change to welcome two foster children and, uh, you know, to be there for them when others haven't a lot of times. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, and if anybody has any prayers, please 
please put those in the comments. Today, let me tell you uh, right before we get started, <clears throat> uh, in the fourth week of Lent, our reading is from John 6, uh, John 6, 16 through 27, if you would like to go. The Gospel of John 6, 16 through 27. And after a moment of silence, we will begin on page 103 of the Book of Common Prayer, uh, where our service is. So we'll take a little moment of silence, maybe reflect on this beautiful day we've been given. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 119. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O oh Lord, according to your word. Accept, O oh Lord, the willing tribute to my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled himself to us and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Again, our reading is John 6. Make sure I get the verses right. John 6, 16 through 27. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. Now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him back into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not gotten into the boat with the disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Well, Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. The Gospel according to John. <clears throat> you know, right before this story mentions that um, it's just been the feeding of the 5,000 and um, you could probably make the case that there's still people eating some leftovers from that uh, glorious uh, uh, miracle. And so it's very fresh. And we hear in the, uh, you know, the same kind of reading in Mark where Jesus went off to pray. He needed some me time. Well, I guess it's not me time, it's, it's we time needed to be with his father, God, and, uh, and kind of get himself ready. 
but the thing that I, strikes me about both of the stories is this idea of fear. You know, we know that the storms are coming up. It's, it, it does make complete sense uh, climate-wise in the Sea of Galilee. I mean, winds and storms can come up out of nowhere. And anybody who fishes it knows that those could come. And the disciples are probably wishing that they had had Jesus on board with them. And so they're very afraid. And then here comes Jesus. I mean, gosh, walking on water. Uh, you know, but this idea of fear is very real for me. And I know it is with a lot of us where it, fear can be debilitating or, or you can be a fight or flight. You know, you can, you can be fearful and then act out in anger and, and harshness against somebody or you can be fearful and curl up into a little ball and be debilitated so you can't do anything. And we have a lot of fear that comes in our lives. Now, some of that is real. I mean, uh, you know, some people fear spiders and snakes. I mean, it, it's good to fear those. I'm going to let them stay in their spot, and I'm going to stay in my spot, and it's cool. I need to know that they could harm me. Or, you know, I was reading a story about someone uh, who had been a part of a huge earthquake, and it so frightened them that anytime there's a tremor, even if it's not anything, you know, all those feelings come back and all that, that uh, fear comes back and it can really affect you. But here it is, Jesus says, uh, don't fear, it, it is I, you know, it is I, don't fear. And you know, when you hear those words, you think, oh, yeah, okay, don't fear, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it seems like <laughs> in my life, I've heard scriptures like these, and it's, it really has given me peace because I know that Jesus is with me. You know, I was talking to the kids this morning at day school chapel, and I talked about monsters under the bed. You know, we start young with these irrational fears. There are no monsters under the bed, but we just have this fear irrationally that can take over us and, and keep us from um, entering into, uh, you know, sleep for kids when they think there's a monster in their bed, but uh, not entering into a relationship because we're scared or not coming before God to ask for forgiveness and letting that weigh on us because we're scared or uh, not being a part of a church community because we're scared of what might happen. And I hear these stories because I think Jesus knew that we have this fear in our lives and he just wants us to know it is I, I am with you. And we see that he has power over the storm. I mean, he has power over things. So whatever storm comes into our lives, God's got it taken over. And that's where this story has revealed itself over and over again in my life where I've had a big storm and God calmed it. Or maybe even I had a, storm of, that would have been a storm before uh, my faith had grown that calmed before it even got started. And so I think this was a good reading for me just to remind myself um, that I have God right there with me to calm every storm that comes my way. And Jesus does have the control and we know uh, that all storms were taken away by his sacrifice for us on the cross through that unconditional love that he gave us. And I just want to have hold on to that uh, as I have all of my fears in my life uh, calmed with God's peace. Now, there are times where we are in need and in a place where we are worried. And if there are any prayers that anyone has, please allow us to lift them up today and allow God to calm those those storms that are going on in people's lives. Please put your prayers in the comments section and we will lift them up. Let's continue with our prayers. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Lord, we pray for those committed to our prayer list. We pray for the Episcopal Church, and we pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, the presiding bishop, Larry, our bishop, and our clergy, Danny, Michael, Patricia, Susan, Joanna, and Billy. And we pray for our vestry who are meeting tonight. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for Iglesia Anglicana de Chile, in the diocesan cycle of prayer, we, we pray for St. Stephen's in Horseshoe Bend and St. Mark's in Hope. We pray for an end to racism, terrorism, oppression, poverty, pollution, and persecution. We pray for our staff, especially Karen Blissett, our parish administrator. We pray for our parish ministries, especially the Altar Guild, <clears throat> we pray for the safety of first responders, healthcare workers, and those <clears throat> in the military, especially Megan, Sam, Breen, and Marshall. We pray for those families expecting children, the Bickles and the Allens. Lord, we do lift up to you those who or in chronic pain. Uh, may you give their doctors guidance and give them your Holy Spirit to feel comfort. do pray for the repose of the soul of Kenneth and Greg who passed away yesterday. We lift up to you, Lars, Lord. Be with him. We pray for Amanda's co-worker. May you give them the love that they need to share with the two new foster children that they are caring for. <clears throat> we pray for Jeff and Tim. We lift up to you, Nancy, Lord. And we lift up to you all those things in our hearts that we cannot or have not named. May you be with us through them and support us and guide us in all the decisions that we may need to make. In your name we pray, amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you all for being here with me. Have a great afternoon. <clears throat>